What's up guys, and today I'm going to tell you a pretty fascinating story about a company called Virtue, which is a brand you might be familiar with, but the full tale is really something. So believe it or not, this is actually a British company that was founded by the one and only Nokia, except it was then sold on to private investors. Now, Virtue had a pretty interesting philosophy. In an interview, the CEO described his target market as the kind of people who are going to spend $20,000 on a watch. And if people can spend $20,000 on a watch, why can't they do the same for a phone? Because after all, your phone is technically speaking a lot more useful than a watch. So essentially, Virtue was trying to tap in to the super luxury market, to the kind of consumer who buys a smartphone, not just for its functionality, but also as a fashion accessory. And fair play, because it was one of the first companies to enter this segment, and at least initially, it was very, very successful. They started back in 2003 with the Virtue Signature, a pretty beautiful phone. Now notice this is 2003 we're talking about, so it's before the explosion of smartphones onto the market. So Virtue had a little bit less competition. Phones weren't nearly as capable as they are today. They can only perform very basic tasks. There wasn't this huge race that we see today to pack in the latest processor and the latest camera. And this played to the advantage of Virtue. As well as these crazy price materials on their smartphones, the company also had one more thing up its sleeve. With every single Virtue smartphone a consumer buys, they get access to a 24-7 concierge service. So any customer of the company can simply call them up any time and say, organize my travel, organize my hotels, or even organize delivery of my food. And the company will fulfill it. And so this admittedly dazzling smartphone with five carats of ruby just in its keypad was actually selling for $15,000 for the base model. As you scroll further and further down the page, the models get more and more expensive, topping off at about $50,000. This $50,000 gets you a smartphone that is plastered tip to toe in 18 karat red gold. Does it look good? Not really. Let's just have a think. What else could you buy with $50,000? You could buy yourself 100 OnePlus 5 smartphones with money to spare. You could even get yourself a top tier Tesla Model 3. But no, some people are going to spend that money on a smartphone. Oh wait, it's not even a smartphone. Speaking of smartphones though, when they did finally start to take off, I suppose after the original iPhone was announced, Virtue started to take a bit of a nosedive. The company's answer to this was their first Android-based smartphone called the Virtue Ti. Now the problem here is that the smartphone explosion started a bit of a specification race, a race to pack in the latest and greatest components, and it was changing every single year. Now if you think a small company like Virtue, which makes handcrafted smartphones, they can't keep up with that. This company can't place huge batch orders for the latest and greatest chips. They're not going to be able to have the best tech inside just because they've got such small buying power. It's going to take them a very long time to really put together a smartphone because there's very few people working there. And therefore, when a phone eventually does come to the market, it's going to be behind. And that's exactly what happened. When the TI came onto the scene in 2013, it had one gigabyte of RAM, a 480 by 800 resolution display, and it had Android 4.0. Which, fine, this is 2013 we're talking about, but if you look at the other smartphones released in the same year, like the Galaxy S4 for example, that had two gigs of RAM, Android 4.2, and a 1920 by 1080p display. Those two are not even on the same playing field. Not to mention, whilst Virtue did still have their concierge service over and above what Samsung offered, they were also falling behind in terms of features. Because on top of just what Google had, Samsung started developing their own. They had things like air gestures, they had things like apps to monitor your health, all sorts of little things baked into the experience, which Virtue, again being such a small company, just could not keep up with. So you're probably starting to see where the problem is. By not ensuring their phones have the latest and greatest technology inside, the company has kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit. All of a sudden, those high flyers who were almost a sure sale with their previous non-smart devices have a bit of a dilemma. Those people are actually, even by buying this great looking smartphone, are not getting the best features. They're not getting the best performance or the best camera. So if they actually want those, they have to buy a smartphone that costs about a tenth of the price. So many of the people who could and would have bought a Virtue smartphone in the end decided to just go for a conventional device because they were actually getting more features for a fraction of the cost. Just as a bit of a side note, if you are enjoying this video, it would mean so much to me if you could subscribe to the channel. We're trying to hit 1 million subscribers by the end of 2017, and that would seriously help me out. Now, in 2014, the company introduced a new smartphone, which was then refined in 2015, the Virtue Signature Touch. This was carrying the company's flagship signature brand, and in a lot of ways, it was very worthy of the term. Because the company has really upped their game this time. 
with the 2015 version of the phone. They had an alligator skin, they had a sapphire, literally unbreakable display, and they also had slightly more up-to-date components. Four gigabytes of RAM, a 1080p display, and a Snapdragon 810. Now, as with the original Virtu Signature, the prices again stretch to about $50,000. And clearly, this isn't a value for money flagship. You can't think of it in terms of, okay, for $50,000, what crazy specifications am I getting? Part of this product is really a service, and that service was still on offer. Having said that, whilst this product could have potentially really worked for the company because it's exactly what they needed, they needed to at least match the specifications of their competitors whilst offering these super premium materials, but I think it was just a little bit too late for the company. If they'd managed to match the specs of their competitors from the very beginning of the smartphone revolution, then they could very well be still in business. As it is, they're not. The company was in so much debt from their past devices that earlier this year in June-July time, they finally ceased production which means that 200 people in the UK actually lost their job, and funnily enough, the concierge service stopped. So part of the reason some people will have sold both their kidneys to buy this smartphone is now completely null. And for you guys who are really interested, the company is actually 42 million pounds in debt to over 300 different creditors. And the creditors are just kind of the people the company owes money to which is really, really bad. The funny thing here though, is that the company is insistent that it's gonna return. In a recent interview, one of the spokespeople actually said, we are increasingly confident that the recent tough decisions we have made are gonna result in a stronger and more exciting Virtu. So essentially, they are planning to streamline, i.e. cut down a lot of their divisions, and then relaunch. Whether or not they pull through is a complete mystery, but if they do, this could very well be the luxury smartphone manufacturer it should have been to begin with. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to smash that subscribe button down below for more stuff like this. I'm Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'm signing out.